is all new to them. The book of Acts is a transitional book. Don't ever forget that when you're reading and studying. It's a bridge, a bridge going from Old Testament to New Testament, going from Jew to Gentile, going from law to grace. And that's why they call it transitional. Things are changing in the book of Acts and therefore a very dangerous place to base your main solid doctrine. And so tonight we're going to just pick out a little uh, phrase here that Peter preached this great sermon they thought they was drunk when they got full of the Holy Ghost. And he preached and uh, talked about showing signs and wonders in verse 19. Sun, the moon, turn to dark. And that wasn't that day. That wasn't that day. That was prophetic in the future. Um, before the great and notable day of the Lord. And it come to pass, call on the name of the Lord to be saved. Verse 21. And then he talked about God uh, raising up Jesus from the dead in, in verse number uh, 24. And then uh, he just went on down through there just a, just a preaching like crazy. And he talked about being saved. And then he said this. Look at verse 40. Verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. You know what Paul told, I mean, Peter told him people? He said, Save yourselves from this untoward generation generation I want to preach tonight on the subject how to save yourself how to save yourself now immediately you get a title like that people say brother Danny you preach for a hundred years nobody can save themselves yeah and, and what you mean by that is when you're talking about being saved from hell and that's true but Peter told these people here save yourselves how do you save yourself that's what I'm going to talk about tonight how do you save yourself now, if you, if you haven't been saved long, you read the Bible, stuff like that might confuse you, but you do understand that being saved in the Bible does not always mean saved from hell. As a matter of fact, several places. In, in, uh, like over there in, in Timothy, when he told, said a woman shall be saved in childbearing, uh, that's not talking about if she has a baby, she'll die and go to heaven. It's talking about her physical body will be saved in childbearing if her faith in the Lord and putting her trust in him as a general rule. Back when it says, and Noah was saved by water, it didn't mean that the water saved Noah, and it sure wasn't talking about hell, it was talking about the flood. So the word saved does not always mean, I'm saved now. You say, well, how do you know when it is? The context. The context determines uh, what you're talking about. When you read the Bible, you got to know who's talking, who they're talking to, and the prophetic. Uh, context in which that scripture appears if you don't you'll get all confused and believe all kind of crazy stuff save yourselves save yourself say for to, a, to our young lady save yourself to marriage we're not talking about saving yourself from hell oh we're talking to our young men save your like your purity your virginity and things like that so tonight i want to talk about that just a little bit and peter said save yourself from what hell no he said he said save yourself from from untoward generation so Peter warns them people you're going to be responsible for saving yourself from this crazy generation that you're living in that just crucified the son of God my message to you tonight is your, your name's in the book of life you're saved and going to heaven when you die but you're responsible for saving yourself your body your life your testimony from this crazy untoward generation what does the word untoward mean? It means contrary to what is desired. Unfavorable. Difficult to manage. Perverse. Perverse. Uh, un, untoward. So if we're living in an untoward generation, we're responsible for saving ourselves from it. Obviously. Now, we're living in an untoward generation. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you hear it every, every, time, every time you turn around. We are living in the absolute craziest most unbelievable times that I, I, I'm not, we've not even seen nothing close to what we're seeing in our generation time. I mean, you, you, think, you think you've heard it all. I mean, it's weeks of it. Y'all heard about what's coming out now? They have AI Jesus. I mentioned it this morning. AI Jesus, artificial intelligence Jesus. And thousands of people are already flocking to AI Jesus, an artificial intelligence, a robot uh, artificial intelligence who says he's Jesus and he gives you counsel on life and your decisions that you should make 
And I bet he does too, boy. And you know what they say he's going to do? Rewrite the Bible. And they're going to write a Bible. Artificial intelligence is now going to write a real Bible with the real truth in it that you can really believe with no mistakes in it whatsoever. How convenient. But it, that is the day we're living in. Buddy, I'm telling you, they stuff coming down the pike. I mean, you, uh, Carrie sent me that thing. Two or three people mentioned about that woman who's in her 20s and is now suing her parents for having, for bringing her into the world. Y'all heard that? I mean, there, she's suing her parents and like to want it. Like to want it. She's in court and she's suing her parents for bringing her into this world without her consent. They said they should have contacted her. Here's what she said. She said they could have got a medium or a psychic and contacted me in my mother's womb and asked me if I really wanted to come into this world. And if I said no, she should have aborted me. I'm telling you the truth. And the judge sided with her. was going to make their parents pay her $5,000 a month. I twelve hundred bucks a week, man, for her to live on, and then they fought it back and overturned it. Now, now you think we're you think crazy's crazy? You yeah, you some of y'all don't even believe that. It's a truth. I, they went to court, and, and she said, "What am I going? I didn't ask to be brought into this world, and not, they're not even going to give me my five thousand dollars a month. Now I'm going to have to get a job." Well, bless its widow heart. Poor widow, Lord have mercy. It'd be awful if it had to work a little bit, wouldn't it? I tell, I'm telling that is the day we're, we're living in an untoward generation and a half. I'm telling you what, it's absolutely unbelievable. And, uh, when, and the Lord said, looked at us, he said, save yourself from this. Save yourself. Now, we're living in a crazy time, ain't no doubt about it. So I want to give you three little quick things that you can do to save yourself from this generation. Number one, number one, here's what you do. First thing you got to do, you got to nail down your own salvation. Nail it down. All you, you girls in here, young people in there, you, you know, listen, you ought, to be, you ought to be saved and know it. Don't go through life. The only way you're going to save yourself from the generation of men you're living in is to know that you've been saved. That you know that you know. Now everybody has doubts. I'm, I'm assuming I've doubted. Of course we all have. But uh, I, I know that I've been saved. I know that I've been born again. I know. And and there's three things about this being saved business. Uh, you, you ought to know when it happened. You ought to know where it happened. And you ought to know how it happened. You ought to know when it happened. You ought to know where it happened. And you ought to know when it happened. Now I'm not picky about that. I know some people don't remember exactly was or maybe what church Bible school I, I know you don't they don't have to do that to be saved but I tell you what I remember where it happened I remember when it happened I'll never forget the night I walked in Nebo Baptist Church I walked in there that night had no idea what was getting ready to happen to me I run into my one of my old basketball buddies the other night uh, me and Kelly and, uh, and, and Hickory and uh, he said how you doing there I didn't recognize him at first and we got to talking there a little bit and my mind went back to all them years. I hadn't seen that guy. I hadn't seen this guy in 35 years probably. And I told him, I said, you know what? I said, Tommy, the greatest thing that ever happened to me is when I got saved. I said, that's the best thing that ever happened. He looked, looked, looked at me. And I said, it was. And I'm telling you, them people I went to school with, uh, they, they, they didn't know what happened to me. They thought I lost my mind. They thought I went crazy. But that night, down on my face before God as I fell in that altar that night. I'm telling you something, people, something happened to me that night. Something happened to me. I've never been the same since that night. Never, ever, not one time, not one day. Listen, I failed the Lord a million times and I'm a sorry Christian, but there's something been inside of me ever since that night that wasn't there before that night. I know I was there. I, I was there when it happened, and I guess I ought to know. And there's one thing we got to have in this old world gone crazy. We got to have that rock down inside of us that keeps us straight, and keeps us sane, and said, by the grace of God, one thing for sure, I know I'm, the world will make you crazy, y'all. The world will make you crazy. You get out there playing around this world long enough, it'll turn you into an atheist. The spirit, I know people, I know people, you sit in them seats where you're sitting right now, and they got out there fooling around, fooling around, fooling around. They 
You know, you have their movies and that music and all it's got a spirit in it. And that spirit in you will make you doubt the Bible. And it, it's all spiritual warfare that we're in. It'll make you doubt the Bible. Then they get in a sin and they get in some kind of sin and they think, well, I don't even know if that's even really true. I was just raised that way. Maybe there ain't even a God. Maybe that. And the first thing you know, they're gone. You're not going to save yourself from this generation until you nail that thing down. I'm saved and I know that I'm saved. I, I will, all like Lucas saying, I walk beside him. I cannot deny him. Him. I was born to serve the Lord. Brother, let it down. No, you say. No, when it happened, no, where it happened, no, how it happened. Amen. That's right, brother. Uh, when or where is not as, happened, uh, as important as how. I fell down the form of a sinner and got up a saint of God. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground was sinking sand. Amen. Hallelujah tonight. Nail it down. You say, Brother Danny, I don't know for sure if I'm saved or not. Well, I tell you what you do. When I give the invitation in a minute, you get down here and you say, Lord, I am trusting the blood of Jesus Christ and that. No matter how I feel, it don't matter if I feel goosebumps. Or I'm trusting him and I'm selling it. You're saved by faith in that. You're not saved by getting some kind of goosebumps. So your hair stand up on the back of your neck. You're saved by faith in what he did for you on the cross. Nail it down. Number two, here's what you do to save yourself from this generation. Refuse to participate with them. Refuse to participate with them. Now, this gets difficult because the Bible puts it like this. We are in the world, but not what? Of the world. Now, there, there's nothing we can do about being in it. We can do something about being of it. I mean, we're out here. I mean, the world's out there. It's obvious. I mean, it's everywhere you go. You can't go in a store. You can't go. I mean, you can't uh, look at anything on your phone. You can't turn the TV on without the world just bombarding you. And you're hearing it and seeing it all the time. But don't participate. Don't participate. In other words, if a bunch of your lady friends from work go to you ladies and say, uh, hey, uh, you know what? We're going to have a fun trip to the beach, and we want you to go with us. It's just us girls. Just some girl time. Yeah, buddy. Them little skanks, they done got something up their sleeve. You, you can mark it down. And We're just going to have a little girl time. No, none of these guys are like, I've known some that tried it like that. One of them wound up on the back of a motorcycle with a guy on Myrtle Beach and uh, caused all kind of a big mess. And another one went in worse trouble than that. I'm telling you tonight, uh, here's, here's, here, here's going to be our attitude. Look, I love the mountains. I, I love to eat a steak. I love to see the scenery. I think the ocean's pretty, all that kind of stuff. But, brother, me and you are to only go so far. We don't participate. We don't participate in the parties. We don't participate in the alcohol. We don't participate in the dancing. We don't participate in the wickedness out there in this world. You want to save yourself from this generation? Don't participate in it. Don't think you can dibble dabble or play with it a little bit. You play with fire, you'll get burned. There's smarter people than you are than I am got burned. And there's better people than me and you got burned. You refuse to participate. Amen. I've, I, I've, seen, I've seen too many drunks in the gutter. I've seen too many men out there lying down out giving out tracks and, and just laying over against a building like that. And their neck just as, I mean, just as, 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 as red as that, that by, uh, ribbon out of my Bible there. And their face, eyes all bloodshot. And look at them, their clothes all nasty and stink like sweat and beer. No, I've seen too many of them like that. Listen, when, he sees, I mean, when I see somebody like that, something says, don't go down that road, Danny. Don't go down that road. I know we're living in a time when all these cool Christians, I know all these all these hipster, trendy Christians have figured out that it's all right to drink and all that. But listen, you run from that outfit, kids. You stay away from that. You don't need alcohol. You're not going to be made a better person by drinking alcohol. It ain't going to make you smarter. It ain't going to make you a better person business-wise. You're not going to, oh, they might like you, but you'd be better off never to touch that stuff. Hey, be a teetotaler. Be a teetotaler. You will never become a drunk if you just don't drink none of it. Ain't many preachers in town say that, but it's the truth. You know why they won't? Because there's people in the church that do it. I don't know if there's anybody in here that does that or not, but uh, you're wrong if you do. The Bible said don't look at it when it moves itself aright, when it's fermented. I mean, Drink grape juice all you want to. But the second it gets fermented, it becomes liquid devil. Right. Amen. 
And I, you know, watch out for your relationships. I, I refuse to participate, girl. I know, how many girls? How many girls have we seen that was sitting here in church a few years ago? And because of some some little boy who thinks he's cool. I mean, he's done went to the gym three times, and he's got a he got a golf ball right here. Uh, it looks like a golf ball, and he makes sure he wears a shirt like this to show it off. And and and, and, th- and she says, "Oh, he's got the six pack. Yeah, you 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 marry him a few years, he'll have a twenty four case down here." <laughs> That's right, brother. <laughs> One girl said, "Well, he's got them pearly white teeth." Yeah, and after you're married, he'll put them in a cup every night to soak. Listen. Oh, uh, you say, well, Brother Danny, she's pretty. She's got that hourglass figure. Lord, look at them shiny lips. Look at them pretty eyes. Yeah, them, them hourglass figures, after a few years, all the sand goes in the bottom. That's what hourglass does, the sand. Just like <laughs> That's right. I, I, I tell you what you better do. You better look at her mama. You better look at his daddy. Instead of saying he's cute, you better say, will he work? Amen, ladies? Will he work? Because they're all going to get ugly. You just say, will he work? He may look like a movie star now, a little hot guy now, but you better say, will he work? Will he work? Will he work? Will he work? That's right. And when you look at her, you better not say, oh my goodness, she's first thing. You better say, can I trust her? Amen? Save yourself from this untoward generation. And I would say tonight, uh, listen, God's still playing still the same. I know the world has absolutely gone crazy. All you people got your kids in public school, I feel sorry for you. My heart goes out to you. I'm telling you, the time is coming when a Christian can uh, will not be able with a clear conscience to put a kid in a public school. It's coming. That time's coming. I'm telling you, they are bombarded. You, I know people say, well, I put my kids in a public school because the Bible said we're supposed to be salt and light. Uh-uh. That ain't what the Lord meant when he said salt and light. He didn't mean... He didn't mean drop your kid in a sewer and expect it to stay clean. That's like throwing a kid in a swimming pool and fussing at it when he's wet when he comes home. Uh, it's going to rub off on him. It's going to rub off on him. Home school, Christian school, private school, charter school, anything is better. And I'm not, I'm not anti-education. I'm all for it. I'm anti-stupidity being taught and forced down the throats of our kids when they're young and vulnerable and impressionable. That's what I'm against. I'm Christian. You know what the Bible says about marriage? People say, oh, you're against this, 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 this. The Bible teaches that marriage is a man, one man, one woman, and that's it. And anything outside of that is wrong. That's what the Bible teaches. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Refuse to participate. Not only that, number three, and I'll be through. By setting your affection on things above. You know how to save yourself in this generation? Set your affection on thinking about it. Keep looking up there. Keep looking up there. The other night, we went down there to the camp meeting. By the way, there's a bunch of them going tomorrow night, too. Uh, I think CT's preaching over there tomorrow night. And, both, and I'm telling you, I, I loved that camp meeting the other night. just like going back in time, y'all. I loved it. It reminded me of the old days. Well, on that old sawdust trail, boy, and I'm, old shavings on the ground. Old Frankie played in them the whole service and put them all over my shoes, Nathan's shoes, and everything. Give them something to do, and uh, uh, we we had uh, we we sit there that old tabernacle over in Taylorsville, great big old oak trees out there. Them old saints of God in there with their Bible. That's what built this country, y'all. That's what built this country. Camp meetings, and that we happen to live in a place. I've had people tell me, mother said, "You mean you actually live close?" Let's get, listen. These camp meetings goes on all summer here, all summer long. This is going on all week. Burke County is still going on, or it might have been over this week. They have the big one over in Hendersonville. Then Billy Kelly's old meeting in Greer, South Carolina, down yonder. They're all over the place. And uh, we were over there the other night. I, I enjoyed the service. I really did. I enjoyed the singing and the preaching and everything. And about the end of the service, they got a choir up there. They got this choir up there. And they, I don't know if it's a multi-church combined choir. What there's a lot of people. Uh, probably 60, 50, 60 of them. They got around there. And they had two elderly ladies, little white-headed ladies. And I think they said they were sisters, didn't they? They said they were sisters. I think they did, but I'm not sure. Anyway, they give them the microphone. And we done had a lot of singing. It was okay. But I'm telling you, them old sisters got the microphone, and one of them started singing. And she started saying, one of these days we're going to a place where we'll never get sick. 
One of these days we're going to a place where we'll never cry. One of the, and then they sung that song. Someday, someday, I'll leave it all behind. Someday. And just for a minute there, just for a few seconds. And someday, no more heartache. You know that song? Someday, no more tears. I'll leave it all behind. Someday, someday, no more sorrow. Someday, not like, like tomorrow. I'll leave it all behind someday. And just for a few minutes, I'm telling you, just for a few minutes, I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, I just looked into the glory world. And boy, I got a little fresh breath from heaven. I said, part of God, someday this will all be over with. Someday we won't have to live in this mess no more. Someday we won't have to fight temptation in our flesh. Someday I'll leave it all behind someday. You know how to, you know how to save yourself in this generation, brother? Set your affections over there and not down here. Amen. You'll go off on vacation and lust after everything you see and all them cars and all them, all them places and all that. And that's not wrong going on vacation. But you better just remember you're just a pilgrim stranger passing through, brother. This whole world ain't our home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up. Listen, what, what the Lord done for me the other night, I don't even know if they know. I didn't shout or nothing. I was just sitting there. And I just got to looking up someday. And I could see my mom and them over there waiting. I said, someday, I'm going to leave it all behind. Woo! It'll be over. That helped me. That helped me. That helped me save myself from this. It's like you have to come back down and live in this mess. But once in a while, you get your head up there and you get a little taste of heaven. I like that little boy. They said he's out there one day. And he was holding a string. It was an old cloudy day. And that boy was holding a string. And the guy went out there and he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm flying a kite. And it was real cloudy and storm wind blowing. He said, I don't see no kite. It went up so far he couldn't even see it. And he said, well, I am. He said, well, how do you know it's still up there? He said, I know it's up there. He said, how do you know? He said, because every once in a while, I feel a tug. I feel a tug. And I'm going to tell you tonight, people, I ain't never seen heaven. I can't see heaven. I can't see Jesus. But once in a while, I feel a little tug down here. And that's, he's still there. Don't you worry about it. Thank God he's still there. And brother, I want to set my affection on things above. Set your affection on heaven, not Hollywood. I feel sorry for them people live out there. I have somebody tell me one time, say, Brother Danny, you should have went to Hollywood. I said, I've done been. I didn't like it. They couldn't pay me enough money to even live there. That's the wickedest hell hole I ever seen in my life. Lord have mercy. They said, listen, I, quit, quit being jealous of them people. They're pitiful. They have to take pills to function. I feel sorry for them. Set your affection on heaven, not Hollywood. Oh, Steven Spielberg, them, you know, that guy, he's hooked up with something. He's hooked up some kind of spirit or something on all these movies and stuff. They, he made a movie about AI like back in the 80s. Back in the 80s. I'm telling you, buddy, I, and it was about artificial intelligence, and it was a weird robot like Lost in Space. You know, they didn't look like they, they really do now. I mean, I'm telling you, nowadays, they got them now. You can't tell if it's a person or a human. And it's going to get way worse as soon as they start getting a chip in them in possession by Satan. I'm telling you, set your affection on on uh, heaven and not Hollywood. Not on Kanye and Lil Wayne and Miley and, and Katy Perry. Set your affection on, on what's going on up there in heaven and where we're going to live one day. Set your affection on God, not gold. Set your affection on God, not gold. Now, we ought to work like we're never we're going to get out of debt. You ought to work every day, make all the money you can, be good to your family, give them a nice place to live. Uh, enjoy what you make, work hard, all that. But you better put your affection on God and not gold. A person that puts her trust in money will be disappointed whether they get it or not. If you get it, it ain't what you thought. And if you don't, you're, right, you're disappointed either way. You put God first and say, Lord, I want to honor you and then enjoy your money and do whatever you want to with it. What God bless you with it. That's the best way to live. Set your affection on God and not Go. Amen. Then set your affection on souls and not sin. Set your affection on souls and not sin. I heard, I heard a story one day. They said uh, the plane was flying. And um, I got to fly on one Thursday morning and I don't like it. Said them big ones are they're scary. 
They're scary. And I'm always thinking, get on an airplane. The first thing I do when I sit down is I take all, I say, Lord, take all the dams off of this thing. I do. I do. Because they've been that D plane, this, that D plane. They've been, I don't want to be on one that's damned. Uh, I say, take them off, Lord. And then I quote that scripture where it says, underneath are the everlasting arms. And I say, Lord, put your arm on this thing and carry it to wherever we're going. And, and I know people always say, well, your chances of having a wreck the car, I, I get it, I get it, I get it. But somehow or another, it don't feel like that when you're up there. And I, I get on there and I say, Lord, get me where we're going. And they said one time as this plane got up, it got up there about 20,000 feet. And they hit some, or ever how, yeah, when you hit turbulence, ever how high that is. And it started bouncing around there and doing like this. And people going, ah, 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 scared. And said, so this woman was terrified. She was terrified sitting there. And she said, oh, my God. And this little old boy, he's sitting over there reading, reading the funny papers. And she, and she said, son, ain't you scared? And he said, no. She said, why? He said, my daddy's a pilot. He said, my daddy knows what he's doing. We'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And I thought, you know, that's the way a Christian is. Our daddy's the pilot. I don't mean that disrespectful. Our father's flying this thing, y'all. The Lord that we talk about in Sunday school every Sunday is flying this thing. You'll be all right. Trust him. Trust him, brother. Trust him. Amen? Now, let me ask you a question. That woman is scared to death. That little boy is trusting his daddy. Which one of them was safest? There's both the same safe. That ain't right English, same safe. But <laughs> one of them was safe as the other. They were both the same, but one of them was worried to death, and they're just sitting there relaxing, trusting his father. That's what we got to do. That's what we got. You can wring your hands, jump up and down, scream, holler, worry yourself sick. It ain't going to make you a bit more saved or a bit more safe. Just sit back and read your Bible and pray and be a witness and say, my father's flying this thing. Save yourself. From this untoward generation. I'm going to stop right there tonight. Let's all stand by our heads for prayer. Um, Y'all come on and sing something for us tonight, Kerrigan. While they sing here tonight, here it is getting ready for camp. You don't want to be backslid when we go to camp. You want to be right. Maybe you're here tonight. You say, Brother Danny, I've been, I've been fighting a battle. I've been struggling. I've been uh, going through some stuff. And I just need a good old-fashioned trip to the altar here this evening to make things right with God. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not even right with the Lord. I don't know. I don't know. You know everybody in here, your story, what your problem is. If you need a help from the Lord. And Lord, I feel the devil. He just messes with my mind and my life and my kids and my wife and my husband. And Lord, I, I want to keep my eyes on you this summer. Let's get in here and pray for him. Father, do what ought to be done right now. Bless every single person here tonight. Help us, Lord, to save ourselves from this untoured generation. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. 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 Come on, let's pray. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. Come on tonight. Maybe you need to just come down here. Get down on your face. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. Save yourself. This untoward generation. Amen. Come on. That's right. Come on. Amen. 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 If he's mine, come on, come on. We're dealing with this girl right here. Y'all pray for him. Save yourself. They're in a bad yes, place. Buddy. How would you like to be in their shoes? <laughs> nah, that'd be awful, wouldn't it? That'd be awful. That'd be awful to be in their shoes. I feel so sorry for them. And I can't place all my trust in him. Glory. I can't trust Jesus. Help me. Come on down tonight. You can trust I him tonight. I can't trust Jesus. Amen. He never was as failed to be my need. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. He's a kind he friend. He is my strong